what's underrated, overrated, and fairly rated in New York City. Joining us today on this uh, talk is Kareem from Subway Takes. Uh, keep the meter running. The best creative director impersonation I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Maybe because it's you actually are as well. No, right? no, 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 no. I would never be a creative. For director. this video, <laughs> I would never be. But, a creative but you director. play it so well. It almost something tells me that it's in you somewhere. I studied. I studied. I, I, I have a lot of those those people around. You are familiar there. with right, their right. game. That's uh, how I refer to creative directors, those people. Kareem, you're going to play as our New York expert. You've been in New York longer than us. You make content about New York. It's hilarious. Check it out at the links down below. Also, check out Smala Sauce. Guys, shipping mid-November. Uh, this is the number one hottest chili oil in New York City. About to be in a market soon. I can't wait. But, David... What, what is underrated, overrated about New York City? I want to let Kareem start it off, man, because you said something off camera about burritos that was crazy. I, I, burritos are, they're not even rated. They're, they're just, there's no right. good Burritos ones in, New in New York are not good. They're not rated. They're, they're literally. They're not on the scale. They're not on the scale. Did you have electric burrito? The wannabe San Diego burrito? I don't even know what okay. that is. That's how much I've, I've checked yeah. out of the conversation with right. burritos. Are you, you like, know, no, no, are what, you checked what, out? What, are, in your opinion, what is the best burrito right now? Chipotle. In Chipotle. Are you like, hey guys, call me when you got something good, or you're just like, don't even call me? No, I'll, I'll. If you have a good burrito, yeah, call me, hit me up, tell me, put it in the comments, I will come. But okay. right now, I, I've given up the search, and that's why I've resulted. Like I've just said, you know what, Chipotle is. It's right hard the to corner. beat the stretchiness of Chipotle tortillas. But, but I'll say this: I, I like the top. That's not a crazy take for a New Yorker to say that burritos suck in New York because well, traditionally they're not good. I think it's crazy to say that Chipotle is the best one. That is a yeah, hot no, take. That's, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's hot a hot take. Bo pot boys take. It's a bold take. David. There's this place called Yellow Rose that does San Antonio style chili beef, cheese beef burritos. See, that's, that's too specific, bro. I just want a fucking burrito. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. See, I'm, I'm the, well, no. the San Antonio <laughs> Northeastern. What you're on. saying is you want a burrito, but not like a fairly priced burrito. Because I think you can get one. I would pay for an expensive one. I would pay for an expensive, one. Pay for an expensive one or you, a cheap one. You'd pay 25 for a burrito? Yes. Really? I will pay, dude, I'll pay any amount of money if it's good dude, enough. Dude, for a good San Diego style surf and turf with shrimp and steak in it. You love yeah. styles. Yeah. I'm all about <laughs> the subject. Just, it's not surf and turf. It's San Diego style surf and turf. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With San the Diego French fries. And there's a Bay Area burrito too this week. I got a crazy hot take. Not, and by the way, see, I got a hedge now. Like I'm making a statement about something else going on right now. But I got a hedge by saying that I've had some amazing pizza in New York City. But I just think that other styles of pizzas in other cities are also really good. Well, the nice thing about New York is that you can get those other styles in New York City. Like Detroit style, I fuck with Detroit style pizza. You cannot get a California style pizza in New York City. Though. Nobody wants that. People like what, what is California, California style? Cali have, you ever, have you ever? Had a I'm California? sure it's thin with big juicy avocado on it or something like that. A lot of ranch, a lot of you know non marinara base slices because. California's so wacky. That's just know. flatbread. All right, Dave. I'm just. That's if literally. You're gonna say pizza's over. You can't just talk about the California pizza. My we guy, no. Like, my guy Chicago, wants. My guy Detroit. wants flatbreads. <laughs> you want to go to a flatbread restaurant, not a pizza restaurant. <laughs> hey, the flatbreads. <laughs> they're better. So, David, than no, no. Think. Back up, David. Back up your statement. You felt this I way think for a little. Pizza is overrated in New York City. Why? Because it's still good in other places too. <laughs> Where, where else have you had really good pizza? I've had good pizza everywhere except Seattle. Seattle has really bad pizza. But then all the other good pizza that you had in other places, I think, were based off of, like, New York pizza. No. Like, if you go to New Mexico, you can get, like, a taco pizza. If you go to, like... I don't want... That's not pizza. That's just a, t a taco. No. <laughs> you don't... Have you ever had a Tombstone taco pizza? Like, the frozen joint? Tombstone's my favorite frozen brand. No, okay, what if we said this? What if we said this, David, that New York has the best slice spots because no other city can compete with the amount of slice spots. There are no slice spots yeah. anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah. No, there's, there's not. Like there's one. not. But I'm just saying that's what I, I'm, I'm, let me just Look, amend what also, I said. Traditional New York pizza, because it's like, it's so limited in flavor. And that's why I like spots like Cuts and Slices out in uh, Bed-Stuy that's putting, you know, um, West Indian or Jamaican oxtail on pizza. Stuff that people would feel violated by 10, 20, 30 years ago. You like but collabs. I just, I'm just all about the new. You like thing. when, like <laughs> when Indonesia collabs with New York style. Yes, I want to like see collaborations. I would buy. <laughs> I'll pay Chris, twenty dollars for it. You Indonesia. say like Indonesia. <laughs> you said it like you are Puerto Rico. Bro, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. Indonesian. 
right. Uh, all right. So pizza, burritos. Um, I'll tell you what doesn't exist enough in New York. What? A regional specialty what? from Minnesota. What? It hasn't been exported. What is it? Some sort the of cow ju- milk? The Juicy Lucy. What Are is you familiar juicy with the Juicy Lucy? Lucy? I got to Google it right now. The juicy Lucy is a cheeseburger, but the cheese is inside the beef. Like a chicken cordon bleu. Oh, yes. I'm looking at it, yeah. Whole and pie. what it does is it creates, you know a chocolate molten lava cake? Yes. Where the chocolate's all wet? Yes. Yeah. And it oozes out. Yes. So that, there are a couple of spots in New York. The one that I've had that's really good is at Whitman's. Whitman's but, is good. But this is a Minnesota specialty. There's, a, there's like a battle between who invented the Juicy Lucy in Minnesota that's been going on for 70 years. And the lore is that this guy at a place called Matt's Bar is the one that invented it. But there's another restaurant that I won't name who's coming at him. Cor- correct me if I'm wrong. Like the Shake Shack shroom stack with the cheese inside of the portobello, that's kind of like it, but... It's inspired by. Inspired by. It's it. inspired okay. by. And I, I have a new song that's coming out. It's called Juicy Lucy. Because I love the burgers. What, so what genre is the music? It's rock and roll, bro. Oh, Juicy shit. Lucy by Kareem Rama and can, Tiny. Can Gun. we get a little riff? Go. Ooh, we do it. We got that Juicy Lucy. Hey, man, Yo, this Kareem, sounds I good. Can, that sounds like some good see, rock music, I can man. see this starting a Honestly, campaign to bring the Juicy Lucy more to New York. Like, more people are going to have to serve missing. it. It's missing. You know what it is? You're going to be able to... The fact that you guys didn't know what it was. It's missing from the conversation. You know what, Kareem, you want? I know what you want. You're, you're a culture maker. Or you're a culture, like, curator, partially. That's a, a bunch curator. of stuff that you do, right? Uh, and you're a culture vibrator. <laughs> what you want to do is so that you can go to a bodega or some deli and ask for a Juicy Lucy in like five years and they are going to cook it that up. That would be you. a win for the city. It's like, okay, Let, where, where did we get cheesesteaks? Philly. Okay. They're in New York. But people don't eat them that much here. I mean, how do we know what they do in their homes? People might be in their homes eating in Philly That's cheesesteaks. That's true. All but day. I feel like the more, you know, that transitions us to our next topic. What's more popular is the chopped cheese, right? Yeah, which is the New York version of do, the. Do you have an opinion on chopped cheeses? I actually think they're they're good. I think they're, they're good. not they're not trash. They're super good. Do people think they're bad? I I don't love. I, them. I see people from out of town, Andrew. You know, especially we know a lot of people from the West Coast, LA area that come. The, you you there's a variance of opinion on. Here's chopped my cheeses. thing. No, no. Here's my thing about the chopped cheese. It's you, if you don't get it at a good spot and you have no extra add-ons and you have no creativity and you're zero creative, then I think it's super mid because it's just a cheeseburger. But, but, but let me, if you ask for extra, extra sauce, I get the, sometimes the Dominican red sauce or you either have a Chipotle in there, you get the Chipotle mayo and you get a little bit extra, ask for extra seasoning on the beef and all this stuff, then it, it can be pretty good. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How do you feel about French dips? French dips can be super plain. I they're, know, but they're fire. French dips are fire, like but... As, uh, as plain as they are, when you f- dip the French, they're good. shit's fire. There is something about the bread soaking up the au jus yo. that is like... <laughs> it's got, it's, <laughs> yo, wet, Wendy... Uh, not Wendy's, Arby's. Arby's is a suburban classic. Arby's underrated. French dip Arby's. is not bad, Bro, right? Arby's is underrated in general. I haven't been there in a while. Arby's... Because they don't was, have them in the city. Well, right? when I was growing up, my dad loved five for five. Bro, five sandwiches for five dollars? Are you kidding me? It's crazy. He could feed the whole family for five. That is, I'm thinking about that right now. That is insane. Five for five, and then they changed it to five for six. Yeah. Sad day in my life. Do you uh, eat uh, New York Chinese food? Like, you know how, like, that's such a, it's like a hood staple. But like, particularly you know, New York lot, style Chinese I would say food. a lot of people that are New Yorkers, they, they pick a level of Chinese food. Maybe you're an Upper West Side, Upper East Side person. You have your things that Marilyn Monroe and stuff used to go to. And then, like, obviously, if you, uh, you know, in the hood, they got their spots. And it's like everybody has their Chinese spot. I'm a, I'm a more of a uh, Chinese takeout kind of guy. Like, I get it delivered to the crib. When I am eating it, I like, I re, I mean, this is a classic. I don't know if this is considered Ch- New York Chinese, but um, what the hell's the place called? I, I just had it on the tip of my tongue and then I forgot what is it. it? There's a couple locations. Cheyenne Famous Foods. Xi'an. Xi'an. Yeah. Xi'an Famous Foods. That's more authentic. That's more like food from China that they slightly New Yorkized. It's so it's good. 
fucking good. It's my f- lamb cumin noodle soup. Mm. Well, I, can I tell that's you something about that food? Had, actually, that's the only thing I've yeah. ordered because I found something good. And I. that's also, I'm a creature of habit. I've never had another single thing on that menu. Right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I've, I've lived here for 12 years. I've been going there for 12 years. I got the lamb cumin noodle soup the first time, NS2, on the menu. And I never got anything again. Hey, that's where, you know, in the ancient days, a few thousand years ago, where someone like you, who looks like you and someone who looks like me, we would meet on the Silk Road. And you know where the Silk oh. Road ran through? Where? Xi'an. <laughs> so, yeah. Really? No, the no, Silk no. Road ran from all the way from uh, you, the Middle East you, to China. You know why you love that food so much is because it is influenced by the Middle East. Really? Yeah. Is that true? No, no, literally. You, I don't you know. know. I know it's true about you. Is? That's why you love that food. The Silk Road was, <laughs> the, was the ancient trade route from Xi'an yeah. to no, modern facts. day Iran. Yeah. Silk Road is a, to- is a dope name. Yeah. Um, wait, so what is a good, like, I will go check one out. What is a good New York style Chinese oh, restaurant? Oh, man. All right. This like, is, what is a good this example? Is, all right. So there's, What's New, the best there, there's like New York American mm-hmm. Chinese food, but I think what you would like even more is Chino Latino food. Yeah. I've had Chino Latino food. There used to be a restaurant in Minneapolis called Chino Latino. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What, like Chinese people from Dominican Republic or wherever? I don't even know. Cuba? I don't know the history. They're probably. basically Chinese people from a Spanish speaking country. If you go to New Apollo, then. New Apollo is yeah. crazy. That's the spot. In Williamsburg. That's the spot. Yeah. So there's okay. a, but there's a spot oh, called Caridad. Caridad de China. I gotta go to Williamsburg. Oh, oh. no. Sabrosura. Sabrosura. And Dude, uh, I. Uptown. There's a spot called Golden Forest down the block from here, I think. Top notch. Like so these are New York Chinese spots. New York Chinese yeah. spots. You can get or chicken wings. They're, they're, they're fried rice. Our Chinese who grew up either in Cuba, PR, DR, that moved to New York. Damn, you guys are good with the subgenres. Yeah, because I wouldn't yeah. even notice. I would have just been like, let's get Chinese food, and that's what I would have had. No, try it. Try it. Up uh, favorite deli sandwiches. Do you get? I was going to talk about this. Bacon, egg, and cheese, or or blah blah blah. All right, Dude. what's your pick? If you had to say, yo, try one sandwich <laughs> at a deli. It's going to just be really any deli. It's going to be really embarrassing. It's going what? Uh, it's going to be embarrassing. Okay, go. Is something super Minnesotan. Or I just get it? I get like turkey clubs. Okay, but anything it's else? A fire on? sandwich though. No, no, I get it. so I get uh, wheat bread sliced, okay. toasted, cold meat, turkey. Sometimes I get the boar's head honey one, so it's a little sweet. Lettuce, tomato, mayo, turkey bacon, salt, pepper, splash of vinegar, and leave it cold. I don't like the hot sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And I just had one yesterday. I think that's my go-to. That's my go-to. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's my, like I said, I'm a creature of habit, bro. I literally get the same thing everywhere all the time. That's your comfort zone. I just, when you find something that works, here's the thing. There is a lot of bait and switch happening in the city. Where, like, something's really good and then something else is really bad at the same restaurant. Yeah, like, not everybody's going to be 10 out of 10 at everything. Right. And so when I find what works at a specific place, I'm a repeat customer. Mm. Like, I was thinking about it the other day. I have given, oh, there's a smoothie spot in bed called uh, called Brooklyn Blend. I go there every day for lunch. I get a smoothie. I get the same smoothie every single day. I've probably given them $2,000 this year. If you really think so, yeah, it's a ten dollars. That was a, that was a subway thought. I was like, wow, I've literally given these people two thousand dollars over the course of a year, only with smoothies. Yeah, if you use the Apple Card, you'd be able to see the breakdown exactly really? of how much you know because they got the analytics in the Apple Wallet or just the if Apple you have, Card. You have to get the Apple Card. Oh, I don't have the Apple Card. Do you guys have the Apple? Card? No, but I just oh. know that that's what everybody who has it they like the analytics. Wow, I, there'll be more. You know what I mean? How do you feel about analytics? You need them. I think you need a lot of context to interpret analytics because uh, obviously that's more of that. Analytics, I mean, overrated or underrated? I think overrated. Fairly rated. <laughs> wow. But I'm a big numbers guy. You? What's your opinion? I think it needs to be rated a little bit less. Yeah, so I'd say it's I, slightly I think overrated. When it comes to yourself you're, as a human, I think do not rate. Yeah. I think if it comes to your businesses, videos, blah, blah, blah. You need a macro sample size. You need a data sample of like a I certain just, scale. I don't want to know how much I slept. I really don't. I'm like, yeah. I slept. Do I feel good? Yes. Oh, I only slept five hours. Oh, no. Now I feel so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I didn't get my seven hours, but I feel great. No, you're not the type that's tracking every single step. I'm not every tra- calorie, I, every day. I, steps is I do like because I try to hit that 10,000 because I don't go to the gym. Because it's a goal. And yeah. I don't want to die. Yeah, okay. right, right. So well, you got to look stick. Dude, you know camera adds 10, 15 pounds. You're doing subway talks. You can't look crazy. I have a friend that. that tells me every day, he's like, bro, you got to lose 10 like you're about to audition for the lead in the A24 film. Says that to me every day. 
He's kind of a bully, huh? That's cool that you have a goal, though. You think A24, you're like, that's what I'm They're like, for. look how thin Rammy was. <laughs> yeah. Rammy was thin. They Rammy like, was thin. They Chris like, Ahmed, he's they, so thin. They, oh, they to like, be Rammy, I don't know. You might have bro, to drop 25. If you, want, if, you want, if you want to make an A24 film, just get a bunch of skinny, weird-looking people in a room together. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the movie. And color, film. you have to color grade it. Put the LUT, that special LUT on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get. You know, what about Middle Eastern food in New York? We're, we're so close to the Middle East here. There's a lot of really good Middle Eastern food. Okay, wait. Can I ask you this? Overrated or underrated halal carts in general? Not talking about Adele's, which is top tier. The halal carts. Do you eat the food? I do eat the food. I think they're fairly rated. I have a problem though with halal, which is that I've eaten so much like Arab Middle Eastern food in my life that I generally speaking would rather go to a jerk chicken truck or some other sort of truck. But I think that the halal food is good. The halal truck foods are good. Yeah, they're, they're better than in go-to. other cities. A lot of other cities. Yeah. I would say every other city. No, it's probably that, the, they probably have the best halal cart food Did you go to Adele's? New York. No, Adele's, I haven't been a, You know what I'm talking about? That's the new like hype halal guys. Like You know how halal guys are super corporate now? There's like a thousand yeah, of them yeah. across the world. Does it matter... Your previous statement about how halal carts are really good, does it matter that a lot of them are ran by Egyptians and you are Egyptian? Yeah, I fuck with Egyptians, bro. <laughs> I fuck with Egyptians, bro. That tribe is the vibe or whatever you say. Uh-huh. <laughs> the vibe is the tribe. So what are your favorite Egyptian spots? Because I know that uh, I want to say Balade is one. Balade, yeah. Balade. But that's in, like, that's in Manhattan. Yeah, I've been yeah. there. I've been there. I've been to uh, Mamoons. Mamoons is Mamoons, fire. everybody loves Mamoons. Mamoons... Their pricing is like almost old New York. Dude, they're they, pri- didn't, they didn't raise it to be it's new. It's $6 for a falafel sandwich, which is what it was 12 years ago when I moved here. So they f*** with the vision. They're fighting inflation. They are fucking with the vision of the New York we want to keep. Yeah. Because they could charge 12 I think they could charge $12 for that sandwich, and I would happily pay it. Yeah. Don't listen to this, Mamoon. <laughs> uh, but I think that's the best falafel in the city for sure. Took my mom there. She agrees. Right. You mean best She's period or just country, best, right? like best, best for the falafel. price? No, no. Best, best falafel. Best falafel. Okay. Because it's green on the inside. And if you notice, a lot of the falafels are brown on the inside. Yeah, that's true. That is not how you make falafel. Yeah. The Egyptian style, which is called tameya, is green on the inside because they put parsley in there and it dyes it. Yeah. And that's how you know it's a good falafel. If you go to a lot of the carts or a lot of other restaurants... It's brown or it's like golden. Yeah, it's like a rice ball. They're not using enough parsley or they're using the wrong kind of beans. They're using chickpeas. Oh. And it, it's it's not the right way to do it. It's probably cheaper. Um, but that's why I fuck with my moons. Oasis mm-hmm. in Williamsburg, great falafel, also mm-hmm. good prices. I think most impressive restaurant for me, and I've said it so many times, but I love this place called Abu Kir in Queens. Mm. And it's super basic, one room, seafood, Egyptian-style seafood. Yeah, because people wouldn't think of that, right? No menu. You go in there and you say, I like that fish, I'll take it. I'll take, like, Yo. a handful of, literally a handful of calamari. And he just goes. Yo, there's no. And then there's two options, grilled or fried. Fire. That's one you of those spots that you out. only find in Queens. You are it's not going to so get that in Manhattan. fire, though. Still... And I think they had a little glow up because some people discovered it on TikTok and stuff, mm-hmm. so I'm happy for them. But that place, I also took my mom there. They have a uh, Semek Meshwi, which is this Egyptian, it's, it's Alexandria style, Alexandria, Egypt style grilled fish. I've never had it anywhere else in the world except for Alexandria, well, Egypt well, or now, Cairo. You think in all the and old, Abu Kir has it. You, you think they were like eating that, like, you know how in the West we're so exposed to such a, I guess, a stereotypical image of Egypt with sphinxes and pharaohs. Were they eating that food? I, I don't know if they were eating that specific food because the reason that food is so good is because the fish is covered in so many spices. You can't even see the fish. It's literally cr- encrusted in spices. Hard. And I think in order for them to get to that level of perfection, the spices came from probably from Asia. They probably came from like right. you Latin mean, The trading routes had to yeah, open up a little bit more. Yeah, because it's like such a mix. It's a, such a unique mixture of spices. I've never had anything that tasted like it. I don't know what the spices are. If you ask the owner of Abu Kir, he won't tell you. Right. He won't even tell you where he gets the fish. Right. I asked he, him. He goes every morning, but I'm like, where'd you get it? And he's like, I can't tell you. It's my secret. Have so you been to... Uh, he's protecting the rest Have of you it. been to the Kawa... Kawa Cafe. That I've never been there. Ye- Yemeni spot. Yeah. You know, like I've seen it. I don't, uh, unfortunately, the branding turns me off. <laughs> but I think it's probably good. I'll, it's cool. Go I had a, we ate, uh, had some pretty strong coffee there. It was good. You know, I want to shout out Zuba, 
which is around here. Yo, Zuba, we went there in no in no leader, bro. Yeah, it's like is an it, electric Egyptian spot. They're Egyptian, but they're that is their first location outside of Cairo. Yeah. They have like 10 or 15 or 20 locations in Cairo, and this is the first one anywhere in the world. Is it called a halawash? How how was she? That's like an Egyptian thin hamburger sandwich. Yeah. That, that was pita, good. right? Yeah. That was like good. a hamburger and a pita. It's fire. But they only, yeah, that place that place uh, I went there when I was in Cairo this time around because I was like, "Oh, let me compare mm-hmm. it." And I I'd say it's very it, it's very solid. It's like a good Egyptian fast casual dining experience. What if we did a Lucy Juicy Juicy Lucy Halawash? Whoa. Juicy Lucy. That would be the Kareem. You'd have to just call that the Kareem. Yo, maybe yeah. I'll go there and ask them for a collab. You know how much I love collabs. Peter Luger's overrated, underrated, fairly rated. Was good. Now, meh. Hot dogs in New York. Do you eat them, and are they overrated or underrated? Best hot dog in New York is at Katz's Deli. Okay. Unexpected. Bagels? Bagels, bagels, bagels. Do you eat them? Yeah, I eat bagels. Like, do, you, are you like, do you care like where you get them? Like, are you for me, picky? Me. No, I, I care. think Essa Bagel is the best to me. Because they have the bagel, fa- you know, especially the one that's in uh, Stytown. Town. It's like the factory's in the thing, so it's like. You see. Look, I care about where I get them, but I don't care so much. Usually for me, it's like a special treat it happens once a month, once a month maybe, and usually I'm in bed and I don't want to leave my house. Yeah, the I'm caloric like 11, density is eleven a.m. I'm like watching a movie. I'm having a real lazy day, and I'm like watching a movie for brunch, and I'll order like a fucking fat ass bagel. Um, I like black seed, but I think those are Montreal style. Yeah, very chewy, which I like. Okay, some people don't. Uh, and then I remember there's a local spot in Bushwick that I like, but I don't remember the name. I have to check my seamless. What food do people got to look out for, man? Because uh, like what 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 like what do they got to look out for? Like I feel like the city's changing so much. Like we said, you would never would have believed that the first. Zuba chain outside of Cairo would be in New York, but there's more of that with globalization and the way, you know, technology dissemination, people can blow up a spot through TikTok. What do you, what are you on the lookout for? I mean, what are you looking forward to incorporating in your diet? I, I, that's a very interesting, like, like I said, I'm a creature of habit. That's a, to me, that question is so difficult because I have to make a real big effort to try something new. Right. You are not the foodie going Yelp elite style. I'm just like, what is like what looks good and I pop in there, but I don't have a list. I don't have a list of restaurants I want to try. I don't really subscribe to anything. You know what I mean? Right. I take Eater, rec- you're not on it. If I, I go with whatever my friends recommend, honestly, that's the easiest way for me is somebody's like, yo, you got to try the spot. I go try the spot. I had this, somebody do that to me the other day about a restaurant in Queens. Unbelievably good. What was it? Um, I went there and again, tip of my tongue. I just made a reservation there. We have to find it, right? Well, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, clearly not necessarily food content creator, but you still know about, you know about what you've had. The thing is, I but also- But you're just not trying to try like 50 things in a day. The only, the thing no, is- I'll, I'll, To your credit, can I, can, I, can I defend you in that, cre- you know, for us, in our content, we're always out exploring, but I will say this, that creating new neural pathways and trying new <laughs> foods, it is tiring. Yeah. And it's weird. It can take you out of your zone. But a lot of what I do in like keep the meter running is I tell them, take me to your favorite place. Right. Which takes the, takes it off of me. Right. So you're down to roll with other people. hundred percent. But as far as you like spending, racking your brain, trying to like, you're just like. It's a lot I'm, of right, Like yeah. you see a new spot open up like two blocks away from your crib. You're not necessarily immediately shooting there. No. But if, if I read about it, maybe in New York mag and it's all, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's in my neighborhood. You, you just need a push. I need a little gentle push, but I'm not out there exploring. If I come yeah. across it, I'll go. Rolos, by the way. Rolos is a spot in Ridgewood. I think it's, I wrote a review. I don't even write reviews. But, but like, what kind of food is Dude, it? Dude, I'll just read it. It's so fucking fire. It's like some sort of like. Read the description. Uh, uh, easygoing venue featuring a cocktail bar and wood-fired grill plus brunch at weekends. Not a great description. But this place. <laughs> no, this place. Look at this. This is my review. We'll pop it up. And right I don't review. I feel like it's very hard these days to find a meal or a restaurant that makes you feel like you've discovered the best place in New York City. I feel like Rolos is that place for me. Everything on the menu is 10 out of 10. I would eat here every day if I could. Great for impressing your, your visiting from out-of-town friends or family or just having a nice intimate meal with your closest pals. I've been wanting to go ever since I went. And that's when I know it's really good because, like I said, 
on a regular. I'm looking it up right now. I can't even. T- this food looks interesting. Like, Dude, it's whoa, so good. Anyways, uh, wow. Also, you know, sometimes I go to restaurants for the vibe mm. rather than the food. So, like, Balthazar has good food. It's not amazing food. It's good food. But the dining hall, it's a fucking experience. It's yeah, you theatrical. Think you think you in a movie? Dude, you set. know what sucks, yeah, man? A movie. The one time I mustered up enough energy to go to no, the, the courage, courage. to go words. to Balthazar, <laughs> I walked in and they said, we're closed for the next two hours. And I was like... I'm never coming back. You Karen? You you pulled a Karen on him? Have you had the <laughs> burger at Ashaval? Yeah, I like what that. Ashaval. Overrated, fire. underrated, fair rated. I'm gonna go ahead and say maybe overrated. It was still good though. No, with fries it's forty five bucks. I think overrated. I just it's had overrated. it like maybe six months ago. Overrated. I was I was like why is it so I, I think the best burgers are actually in the uh, $22 range. I think the best range. burgers are like in the $10 yeah. to $14 range. Yeah. Like I think that's fair Street. too. I think it's like under 18 I like Superiority bucks, Burger. I think that one's 16 And that's not even made out of meat. Right. Yeah. But Superiority Burger is also very good. Yeah. What do you but think you about all the impossible in the Beyond Beef? Whole- I'm fully out. When it came out, I liked it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. After maybe six months, I was like, this is disgusting. I want to go back <laughs> to veggie burgers. Oh mm. man! And superiority burger. No, makes the ones where you can taste like the bean burger. Yeah. Well, it's not the trying to imitate meat. meat. No, no, no. It's just its own thing, and it's better than the fake meat. I'm like, you know what? I don't eat that much meat. Like, how many burgers do I eat a year? Twelve, one a month. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I need the fake meat. You know, even if I was a vegetarian, which Yo. I have been, I've been a vegetarian for a year. I would still eat a burger every once in a while. That was my special treat. A Beyond Burger, Juicy Lucy. I'm out. Don't don't even <laughs> don't even bother. I'm literally out. All right, guys. We'll go to your deli or your nearest bodega in a couple years from now and ask for a juicy Lucy, and maybe they'll know what it is. I like it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, uh, check out Kareem's stuff down below. And until next time, we out. Peace.